Okay, the recording has started, just so you know. Let me just see if he's... This is Mr. Pat, but uh, we could just part of it enough people. Um, respond. Well, you want to, want to get started anyway? We'll hopefully he jumps in. That's on case, Susan. Yeah, are you ready for roll call? Sure. Yeah, call, call to order the uh, September 21st, 2020 Planning Commission meeting. Uh, yeah, go ahead with the roll call. Mr. Westbrooks? Here. Mr. Schiavone? Here. Mr. Velada? Here. Mr. Roberts? I'm here. And I think I'm going to get Mr. Cox on right now, so give me one second. <coughs> Mr. Cox, are you on? He might be muted. He's on, but I think he's muted and his camera's off, but I think he's on. Because I, I see him on the profile here. I heard him say he's on. Okay. Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm on. I'm on. Okay. Perfect. Took a while. All right. Is that everybody? Susan, did you go through everybody? Okay. Yeah, everybody's there. All right. First item is the approval of the August 17th, 2020 meeting minutes. Anybody have any notes or corrections? Want to make a motion to approve? I, I'd so move, Ken. Yeah. I'll second. All right. Motion to second. Any more discussion? Uh, Susan, we'll do a roll call. Sorry. Westbrooks? Yes. Mr. Schiavone? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Velada? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Great. All right. Um, <clears throat> the first uh, item that was on the agenda, uh, at their request, they have asked to be removed. Um, Mr. France, do we need a motion to remove them from the agenda? Um, if they requested it, uh, I would um, recommend that uh, you accept their formal request by motion. Okay. So I'll make a motion to uh, remove uh, the Head Start at 853 Highland Road at their request. I'd second that. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anyone? All right. All right. Then the first item we'll discuss tonight is Q and A Dental, one zero one one East Aurora Road. Um, who's uh, primary person representing Q and A Dental? I'm not sure if you can hear me or see me. I lost some of the volume. I'm Mike with Signature Sign. I can hear you pretty good. Yeah. And we can see you. I can barely, I lost a lot. I can barely hear you. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know why. Because we can hear you pretty, or at least I can hear you pretty, okay. pretty good. We'll yell if we. Uh, your, your microphone has a line through it, so I don't know what that means. Uh, I think he's he's on both phone and then separately video. Oh, that right. Yeah, the the microphone looks like it's his shit. Mic there it is. I think you, you're corrected. Something might have just got better. Yeah, I think that's better. Now I think you're on both. Or phone. You're getting feedback because you're on both. I think you're on. Yeah, I'd say so either you're, you could mute, mute your phone and just use your computer, or mute the computer and just use the phone. <laughs> Have to give another try. See if we can. If you, can you hear us? I can hear you better. I've got two devices hooked up. I think so you might be getting one of them. Just make sure one of them is back because you're on both of them. <laughs> Maybe try muting the phone and just using the computer and see if that. Comes I better. lost. I lost the picture of myself on the phone. So we can see you. I can't see him. Oh. I can't either. So. I think it depends on just the arrangement of what's on your screen. Um, yeah, maybe try getting rid of the phone. And then... Is that better? Yeah, I can hear you. I can still hear you and no feedback. Um, so is it I think just... I got the phone on. Yeah, it sounds better. Okay. All right. Uh, is it just you with us tonight for yours? I'm sorry. Is it is it just you with us tonight? Yes. Okay. Um, I know you sent out uh, some updated materials. Hopefully everybody in the commission got a chance to look at that. Um, why don't you, or uh, maybe, maybe we'll start with uh, Mr. France's comments then, because I'm guessing you addressed uh, the reason for the update was to address his comments. Um, so Mr. France, if you don't mind, why don't you go over your comments and then we'll jump over to the plan itself. Right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my September 7th um, report to the commission regarding wall signage on the building located at 1011 East Aurora Road. Um, this, uh, this is actually the um, old Huntington Bank property in, in uh, Alexandria Square development, um, <clears throat> and because it's in the Hun because it's in the Alexandria Square development, there are sign criteria for Alexandria Square that are applicable. Um, so I reviewed this against the planning and zoning code as well as the sign criteria. As far as area goes, this site um, is entitled to about 293 square feet of signage um, with the uh, with an, which includes an additional 75 square feet of bonus area because it's a corner lot. So as far as area goes, the sign being proposed more than complies with the area. Some of the issues and, and these have been addressed and I'll quickly run through it because they have been addressed. Um, <clears throat> one of the things, the first things I noted on the south building elevation um, the logo was uh, the si logo was a single face illuminated cabinet with a digital print overlay, um, and I believe that's been since addressed in the revi the revised package that came out um, over email on September seventeenth. Looks now that they're um, not using a cabinet sign uh, in their face lit channel letters, which um, complies with the code. Um, and then the sign itself on that south wall um, was being proposed. Uh, it was like a, a, a curved sign that was being proposed over the, uh, let's call it glass bay window. And um, I, my feeling was that uh, that, that uh, really should be located to the, uh, to the wall adjacent the glass bay and the applicant um, has shown that on the revision they, they attached it or proposing to attach it to the, the brick immediately adjacent to the bay window as opposed to being on the window 
which I think is a, a much improvement, much um, needed improvement. Now the Huntington Bank, just so the applicant knows, and I, I don't know if there were any holes or anything left from the Huntington Bank signage, but this issue came up with commission when we dealt with the Huntington Bank sign probably a decade ago. And that Huntington Bank signage equally was pushed onto the wall, but it was to the left of the window as opposed to the right of the window. Not that I think it necessarily matters, um, but just so you know, it was on the other wall. If there was some way to reuse something, holes in the wall or otherwise, it was to the left of the window as opposed to where you're showing it now. Either way though, I think it's a big improvement than on the bay window. Um, the second point that I raised on the um, on the uh, on the plan, the original plan I reviewed was the signage over the main entrance. That signage was um, shown on uh, two separate. Uh, it was shown um, as on two separate lines above, one above and, and below where the sign is currently located. If you look at what they showed, they showed over the white banding over the door, they showed the dental care and then the logo, again, as a cabinet logo was above very large and um, uh, not in compliance with the requirement uh, for um, Alexandria Square. What they've since done is what they did with Huntington Bank, which was combined it all into one feature in that um, above the door wall in the, the peaked area. And I, that is a, a very, um, a very big improvement to what they were showing. So I'm pleased with that. They also took the amper symbol in the Q and A. It was gold. They switched it to white because gold is not a color that was contemplated when the planning commission was looking at provisions of the sign code um, the commission settled on primary and complementary colors um, gold is neither of those primary or complementary so the applicants revised it to be white which i think is good the only issue that i would say remains and i didn't um put this in my report but the way the huntington bank and it doesn't come out at least on on a black and white copy, but if you printed yours in a color copy, I provided you with a picture of how the Huntington Bank signage used to be. And it was a white logo, white sign on that gray backboard. And I'm not sure what that gray is, if it's if it's colored concrete or if it's some sort of EFIS. Um, but either way, it would be helpful. Uh, that gray really now sticks out, if you will because of the blue signage being proposed on it as opposed to previously when it was huntington um again if you look at that picture i provided the the sign was um seen just fine but it didn't make that gray sort of stick out so much now it, it really does i discussed this with um with the city's uh designer who often will review these um, design questions within the town center district and she equally uh, expressed concern about that. So what we kind of talked about, and again, I don't know that material type and maybe Mike with Signature Sign can tell us, but what we talked about was that that logo sits, the, the name and logo sort of sit within a, a rectangular shaped area that if it's whatever the material is, but particularly if it's a painted concrete now, um, that that could be painted white to sort of downplay the stark gray that's all along um, the door wall and above the, again, in that peak area, because the sign is the blue, I think just makes it, it makes that gray pop out more. I think if it's painted white behind, the signage will appear just fine, but it'll draw less of the eye to the gray painted concrete or painted material. And again, maybe Mike from Signature Sign could tell us what that material is. With that said, um, all the improvements that were made in the 917 uh, revision are um, acceptable and just would like the commission to consider the notion of maybe painting that gray rectangular area above the main door to white to, to have less of a visual impact on the gray as it is with the blue sign.
<laughs> We're not hearing you, Kevin. Okay. I guess I'm muted. I'm telling. Okay. Uh, your, sorry your, mic off. your mic is off again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you've got any thoughts. Uh, do you know what that material behind the sign is? That area? Uh, I don't think I was muted. There you okay. go. I think you were. I think it's EFIS. It's painted, painted EFIS. Drive it. And I think that you might want to consider making dental care lettering white and leave the logo blue and white, but just the letter dental care uh, white rather than blue with a white outline, maybe even on both of it. Huh. It, it, would be, it would be up to the board and, and maybe the building owner and the tenant whether you want to repaint all of that that drive it to white. I think either one would work. And I, I think, Mr. Chair, if I can, I don't think the, yeah. the intent was to paint the entire thing white, just the rectangular area that the logo and, and Ward's Dental Care are fixed to, that if that were painted white, it would likely draw the eye to the logo and the name as opposed to the gray. I mean, when you look at it, it's very gray. And both myself and the designer uh, felt that that's all you see is that gray now. And we think it's because the blue makes it pop out more. Because it wasn't like that when Huntington Bank was on there and Huntington was all white. Yeah, I, I honestly, I think it would be better to make dental care white. Unless you really don't like that gray. It look like what it was before. That would be more in, in, in line with what Huntington had. The Q&A is mostly white. Brian, you're uh, muted. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, Kevin? Yes. I have a question. Yes. Along with this discussion, I, I see I see the gray, you know, kind of like jumping out at you. But if you painted that rectangular area white, I think the Q and A would kind of like disappear. Yeah. The white would the white would bleed out the Q and A in the in the logo. Maybe a lighter gray or some other lighter color, or maybe a lighter gray or something, but that's that's just my impression that you would lose the Q&A in the logo. I, what? I, I don't know if this, this is just opinions too. I'm not a big fan of painting that rectangle behind their white and then having all the rest of that gray around it. I, I kind of like the idea of just changing the words dental care to being in white and then it ties in with the white and the Q&A and the logo and then the only blue you have is the blue circle. But I'm also not the designer. Yeah, and maybe no, and that's I mean, and that's you know, it is it is a um, a little bit of a tough issue to work through. Maybe maybe the issue really is painting that whole thing white and leaving the signage as it is with blue. And um, so, what I'd recommend, if the commission's open to that um, discussion, it sounds like they need to get approval from the building owner. What might be good is what to, might be good is to um, have our uh, our designer take a look at it if the commission approved it subject to, and then we could work with them administratively to find the best solution. Uh, Kevin, could I ask a question? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, as I understood it, the, the main problem was that the logo was above the word dental care, and now that's been rectified, right, on all... Uh, on, on all signs, uh, is it rectified on, on the side and, and on the front and all that? Well, the, the, the front, the, the 82 side, it was, it was on the uh, on the bay window. 
and um, yeah. thought was that it would look better on the building, so they moved it over to the building. And I, but is it, it is a, it, is it above the word dental care even on the, on the above, yeah, it's still above over there. It was going to be next. I, I thought the uh, for Alexander Square, uh, I just found their rules. They said uh, no elements of the sign shall be above or below the parameters. Uh, and they used an example of Payless Feuds and uh, Revco logo had a had a little pestle that the logo uh, it, it could be slightly above, but it seemed to be have to be on the same level. But maybe I was wrong about that. Uh, uh, maybe Brian knows the answer to that. I thought it had to be all on the same level. This is the way. Um, if I can, the way the criteria reads is no elements of sign shall go shall go below or above these parameters, and this is speaking to the thirty-six inch maximum height. Um, and so, and actually, that doesn't even apply because this, yeah, thirty-six inches is the max You're for up a little bit. ten thousand. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's hear better. You. Yeah, talking to yeah, the that's yeah, fine. I'm just I'm on such a small space. Sorry, guys. That's the okay. the the way the the criteria reads. It says all signs shall be a minimum of 24 inches and a maximum of 36 inches in height, and may be on two lines, but will not exceed two thirds of the panel height. So I don't think it says that you have to that you can't have elements above one another, but you're capped at the maximum height. And so Mr. Cox may be right insofar as the logo would have to be um, either right to the right of the dental care it, it, I, because it's going to exceed 36 inches or 24 inches tall. The 36 inches tall is, yeah, that does apply to smaller retail buildings. So if the building was over... 10,000 square feet, you get a maximum of 48 inches, but this building I think is like four or 5,000 square feet. So in this case, we're capped at a 36 inches total in height. Where that other um, thing that Mr. Cox was referencing, like the Y in Payless, that's when you have channel letters that are lined next to one another, if the height of the, if the height of the sign is capped at 24 inches in the, in the Y, in pay less goes below that 24 inches. So the whole thing is taller or a letter exceeds and goes above. That's an incidental letter um, and that's allowed. I don't think that necessarily is at play, but the overall height is at play in this case. Hmm. So, so, so can, the, can the logo go above it? If we, I mean, if we approve it, uh, Looks like 6C of those same rules. I guess we can, the Planning Commission can consider this, but I, I wouldn't care if it's above it or, or on the same line with it, but I thought there was some kind of rule against having it above. I don't, I, I've seen pictures of uh, Planet Fitness has a logo above the letters in the back shopping center. Yeah, and they, just so you know, heard my um, yeah, just so you know, Mike, they don't follow these criteria. They actually were developed as a separate, um, a separate outlet, and they're not part of Alexandria Square. Okay. Fifth Third's got next door. It's got uh, the logo above. I'm looking at uh, Google. Let me see if I can show you that. And while, while you're doing that, Mr. Chairman, so if if the dental care as it as it's proposed right now in the revision is symmetrical and lined up with the doors, and and, and if you were to move the dental care up and slide it over, it wouldn't be symmetrical, but then you could move the logo to the end and uh, it would comply. I'm not sure how the fifth third necessarily was, was approved. I don't see a problem with it being above. And 
each element is no taller than 36 inches. So the letters are sh are shorter than 36 inches and the logo is 36 inches. They, they did revise that. So it could be an interpretation of the commission to allow it to have logos above the the sign um, above the actual letters that can be something the commission could interpret. I wouldn't have any problem with that. Yeah, aesthetically, I, I think it fills, you. I it fills you the space problem. better. Uh, I, I like it too. I think it fills that that peak of that triangle better the way the way it's proposed here. Yeah, it fits. I think I agree. Everything symmetrical. At it right now, it, it's it looks good to me. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think we'd be okay with that. So maybe we, we interpret that that way that, that it's allowed. Um, in the shape. I guess it's if if and it sounds like we're all kind of agreeing with that. Um, then it comes down to more the color issue. Um, I guess before we get too far, does that, do any of the other staff have any comments? Nina, do you do you have any thoughts? No, Mr. Chairman, I have no comments on this. Then. Um, not sure who. Um, anybody else? Is there any other staff on there? That have any, any thoughts? Mr. Washbrooks? Ah. I'm here. Yes. Sorry. Okay. I'm not sure if you're incognito or not. So. Sorry. Camera, I'm on the phone. It's a little goofy. There he is. Um, There's his forehead. There's his eyes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so we, we talked about this quite a bit, and we, we talked a lot about the white background because that gray really doesn't match very well and painting that gray white. So that was the opinion of the administration to to paint that white. I think it would match a lot better and look a lot more clean and match a lot of the other buildings in town. So um, the opinion of us would be to paint that white. Are you talking the whole or just the area behind the sign? The whole, the whole gray, because the gray kind of offset when it was Huntington, so that was kind of the intent behind that. But with the way it's set up on the picture that we're looking at, it, it, it really doesn't match very well, and it looks it looks a little bit off. It would tie in with the windows and the trim and gutters and all that. Well, what the blue is a acceptable is, color, isn't it? What if it was a lighter gray that matches the, the, the sides there? It wouldn't jump out as much, and it would match the roof line and other things, too. I'm just throwing that out for consideration. You know, right where dental care is and Q&A, that's kind of like a dark gray. But on the sides there, it's a light gray, unless that's just that might be just a, a, it's probably a thing. I think it's probably a consistent. Yeah, it's probably shadows, lighting, or fading just from weather. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, Mike, I guess so. We've got a couple of a couple of thoughts here. You know, the, I think the administration would like to see if if that could be done white. And maybe we could do something. Um, and I know I'm I'm guessing you probably don't necessarily have the authority to say sure unless you do. Let me I'm guessing you have to go back to the uh, the building. You're breaking um, up. You're breaking up, Ken. Okay, I'm I'm guessing, Mike, you'd have to go back to the building owner. Is that true? Uh, yeah, we would have to have the building owner on board. I think for whatever would be done to the building. Okay. But I, I'm not clear on. W the previous question whether it would be just a rectangular that encompasses the sign because it's a peaked shape and I'm not clear on where this rectangle would occur I, th I think now we're talking the whole gray area I think instead of not just uh, not just a rectangular area I think I think I think we'd be looking at the whole, the whole gray section am I still breaking up no. Yeah, a little bit. Somebody's probably watching Netflix upstairs or something. <laughs> hey, Mr. Chairman. Yes. If I could, I, I think the commission agrees that the logo can be above the, the words dental care. 
and yeah. everything else the applicant has um, adhered to and revised and looks good. I would suggest that the commission's okay with it, that we um, we give direction to uh, have this looked at administratively by the city designer and um, with the understanding that there's concern about that gray and administratively uh, myself and uh, Pam can work with the applicant after they approach the building owner and uh, and kind of approve it subject to that way we give the the uh, the sign um, representative here this evening direction on where we're going with everything except that color and we'll make that subject to administrative review and approval if the commission's okay with that that sounds good to me yeah, me. Okay. Yep. So we should specifically, Mr. President, the motion mentioned that we're okay with the, the logo being above the words dental care. Is that right? That we're as we're interpreting the uh, sign code. Yeah, I would. I would think that you would be in your motion that um, your interpretation of the sign criteria is such that no element can exceed 36 inches in this application, no element of the sign, and that the logo is acceptable above the words dental care, and that an example of a surrounding building is fifth third where that's applied equally as well. That way, if anybody looks back at your minutes in the future, there's some basis or understanding of why you made that, that interpretation. Well, guys, do you think we're ready for a motion? Is there more discussion before you get in? Okay. Go ahead, Kevin. Okay, I'll make a motion uh, to approve the sign plan, uh, noting that the commission's interpretation of the code is such that the elements, no, no single element exceeds 36 inches, and that uh, the logo above dental care is acceptable. Um, and uh, we recommend uh, administrative review of the color of the wall behind the sign on the east side. Is that everything? I think so. so uh, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. All right, any more discussion on that? Well, I was just going to point out really quick. I was looking at their um, Facebook page, and I don't know if they've painted this since, but that gray is weathered with the Huntington sign. Um, you know, you can still read the old outline of the Huntington sign, so they're probably going to be painting that anyways if it has been painted. I'm looking at the PDF, and it looks like that was maybe Photoshopped to, to color that out. That's why that gray looks a little darker than it was. So it might need to be painted anyways, and if that's the case, then let's go with the white. Just throwing that out. All right. Any more discussion on that? All right, Susan, can you do a roll call? Mr. Westbrook? Yes. Mr. Schiavone? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Velada? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. All right. All right. So so Mike, I guess work with uh, work with the staff, and we'll get that little issue of the color worked out. But I think everything is gonna is will work out. We'll show it. We'll we'll get in touch with the building owner, and we'll show it. Uh, you know, with that white. That yeah, that would be great. We really appreciate it. Okay. All right. Well, uh, you're good to go. I guess so you can uh, touch base with the building department about getting that final finalized and everything. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. All right. The next one is Ohio State waterproofing. Who's uh, leading this one from the applicant side? Uh, Leon Sampat's here with LS Architects. All right. Michael DeJohn is here, representative for the applicant. Appreciate it. Um, Bruce, I know you guys, sorry, somebody else. Tom from Amicon Construction. 
Construction Manager. Dan Dinger with Amicon Construction. All right, so you guys have been in several times. Um, this looks like it's revised plan four. Um, I think just working through issues, working through issues. Um, I'm guessing this last one I'm, I'm, you know, probably uh, satisfies all the issues, but maybe if you want to, Mr. France, would you maybe be appropriate to start with uh, any further comments, maybe your summary, and then these, if these guys want to jump in with anything else, we can do it that way. Sure, I can, Mr. Chairman. I provide a report dated September 7th and had some email correspondence back and forth with, um, with Leon and his group. And, uh, and they have done a nice job um, really working with the city on, on buttoning up the plans. It, it's a complex property given some of the nature of the residential to the back of it and um, some of the temporary nature of that residential. I don't know the status of the variances. Um, maybe maybe it'd be appropriate if the applicant could just let us know because I do mention the variances in here and the need for those. Um, so I don't I just don't know if they've been approved or not. Hey Leon, um, you go on your team. Those variances have been granted. Oh the variance have been variances have been granted. Right. Huh. Huh. All right. Huh. There's your answer. Okay. Great. Um, so anything in my report that uh, that I speak to the variances, just ignore that. <laughs> so still remains an issue, though. So the, the building's been shifted a little bit on the property, and the architect will speak to this. They did eliminate the drive aisle between the two parcels, the one that was up close, um, closer to 82. So, or I'm sorry, closer to Highland. And so the drive aisle in the back remains to, to the uh, back part of the property behind the building. There was one previously closer to 82. That's been eliminated. The building's been shifted um, on the property slightly. And I think there is even now a desire, and, and the architect will speak to this based on some emails I've had um, with him, that I think they're thinking about removing that those parallel spaces, which probably might be better to do. Um, so they could speak to that. Um, and what remains, though, is we still need to see a, a lot split and a lot combination. So we'll have the residential to the rear, which will be some temporary uh, temporary use. And you'll see there's still in a proposed lot split. We will at some point need to see the um, lot split plan for that, and that'll need to be approved by the planning commission. But that can be that can be done, I suppose, at a later date. Um, but it will need to be done at some point. The uh, the off, off street parking spaces um, that are being pro uh, provided, five of them are now again shown parallel spaces. I think the architect's going to speak to that this evening. There was some, um, just some, let's call it uh, maybe cat air or such on the, the length of those spaces. And so ideally we want to make them one consistent size, but if they're going to be eliminated, that won't be an issue. As I stated, the building has shifted to the west um, that, uh, compared to when this planning commission approved the preliminary plan. And Again, shows that eliminated connection between the, the two parcels um, on the uh, front end of it. Now more green space has been added. So actually, I think that that works out pretty nice. However, shifting the building to the west did necessitate moving the barrier-free space to the other side of the building. I don't see any problem with that. Um, the issue of the hard surface has been remedied with a variance. Uh, signage, as we've talked about in the past, will need to be submitted as a separate um, submittal. Previously, we did have photometrics provided on sheet four, and previously, the Western Property Line illustrated lighting levels that exceeded one foot candle. Um, now, if the parcels are being combined, that lighting concern is eliminated, but I guess we'll wait and hear from, from the applicant on that. Um, the 
previously approved preliminary site plan has been the landscaping plan has been revised. I detail what those revisions are, but basically they're positive revisions. They've added more landscaping than previously shown, so that's good. Um, the architectural details uh, do need to be approved by the, the city designer. I don't know where that stands. That may be approved now, but um, that's something I think you need to have a conversation with the applicant about. And the same thing, stormwater management details will need to be reviewed and approved by the city engineer. So I recommend final approval or final plan approval subject to um, a couple items. Uh, final administrative review of the plans that reflect compliance with the no items noted in this report. And then eventually approval of a lot split plan for that rear parcel, being that they've received their variances. And then a combination plan for the two parcels where the proposed building is being um, proposed to be constructed over. And I can answer any questions the commission may have. Uh, Mr. Westbrooks, this is uh, uh, Michael DeJohn. I just want to let you guys know that we did submit the, uh, the application for the partial split already. I think that was done uh, last week. I think we're on the schedule for I, next month's hearing, yeah, just, actually, uh, for the record. I actually got that today. So you will oh, be in there, the next there. Yeah, got it today. Excellent. Thanks for the clarification, a, Susan. Is there a lot combination with that as well? Um, I don't know. I can look and see. Is that what you or is that what you guys intended? I'm sorry. Did you say a lot combination? Yeah, I think the like. We were yeah, I, I can answer that. I can answer that. The the paperwork that was submitted both shows a, a lot consolidation as well as the lot split. Good. <clears throat> Good. Okay. Good. So that's that can be. Done. Um, what were the other items? Uh, so you got your you got your variance um, parking issue. Signage will be separate. The metric, as long as the combination of the the consolidation goes through, the lighting issue shouldn't be a problem. To get. Yeah, some administ administrative review of the, the architectural details. Um, I think that could be dealt with. So um, is there any other? other? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I do have a, a site plan here that I'd like to show you that uh, that I did uh, email uh, Brian. Uh, I don't know if I'm able to share my screen on this open so. share tray. Okay. Give it, give it a shot. Try here. Mm. Yeah. So the, okay. So this. Uh, this was our our proposed. Yeah, that's that is this. Okay. So this is what we had submitted. So these are the five. I don't know if, you, if my cursor shows up or not, but it does. Okay, good. So these are the five spaces that we were uh, questioning. So we have overhead doors along this. We we had shifted the building. We placed overhead doors here so the trucks come in. They back in here when they turn here. We were starting to get concerned that that those trucks they're fairly long about the five cars here. So what we have proposed at this point to Brian was, um, uh, I did not have a colored version, but essentially maintaining that for the turn radius of the trucks, but removing those parking spaces and placing them along the front of the building, because this is mainly for the business offices and then screening them properly per planning commission requirements or, or actually the uh, zoning code. And uh, uh, it does not affect our drainage. We, we still have enough room to do our retention pod, but that was the parking uh, situation that came up. after looking at it with the owners. We felt that that might be a better solution instead of having these cars in jeopardy of getting sideswiped by the, the people coming out of the, the uh, building. That seems to make sense. Um, Mr. Francis, that seems to address your issues. Yeah, if you can, um, Leon, go back to that other side where you showed that parking. Yes. Right here. Uh, we lost your screen share there. Or at least I did. Yeah, I don't. I don't see it now. But no, there it is. The back. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Perfect. So that new parking you added up in in the front there. Yes. 
that's fine. It just um, has to, the way the code reads in um, section 1171.11E. 1171.11E, you can have parking in the front yard. It has to be approved by the Planning Commission and um, has to be set back 20 feet from the road right away, which it appears it is, obviously, because you have a 30 foot front yard setback. And then it also has to be well screened from view. Um, and it looks like you have some landscaping. I, I don't know what that is, but um, when we do the final administrative review, um, if the commission allows it to be approved subject to, uh, we would take a look at that. But from what I could see, it looks like you're making an attempt to screen it. And I'm assuming that's new landscaping in addition to what you've already previously shown. Correct. This is new. And that is uh, uh, based off our landscape plan. We were using the same plantings that we were putting over here. We're just adding. Sure. Sure. Yeah, so it's it's likely fine. And I do like that better than the parallel, I agree, is not optimal. Well, especially with their the use, with their, the, 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 the once I measured their trucks, they're, they're a little bit longer than we anticipated. Uh, they're double cabs, full double cabs with an extended bed. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think it's, to me, as long as they're, they're screened well, which, you know, the administration can look into the details and make sure it looks good. Um, I'd be okay with the, with the front parking, just those few spots. Um, does anybody else on the commission have any issue with with those parking? Hey. Okay. Uh, is there anything else the applicant wanted to go over? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I have a comment. Go ahead, Mr. Monica. Please. I spoke to the uh, law director this afternoon, and there is a development agreement that needs to be executed between the city and the applicant. Uh, so if you approve it tonight, it will be pending this development agreement being executed. Uh, and also, I would like to let the applicant know that um, the drawings need to be reviewed by our uh, architect. Uh, she has seen just very preliminary, and there are some items on there that I think she's not going to be approving. For example, there's a section of the wall that shows a brick to be painted, and I know that's not going to be permitted. And uh, she has also a few comments about the frontage of the building. So uh, as soon as you get a revised drawing that's a little more detailed, I would like to uh, send it to her so that we can get her, her comments. Uh, we can email that to you tomorrow. We do have a more detailed plan. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Uh, as it relates to the development agreement, I spoke to Mr. Gaddetti, um and I about uh, the we were terming it a, a memorandum of understanding, but a development agreement is just as fine with us as well. But uh, Mr. Monaco, I, we have yet to receive um, any such um, document or draft. To, um, do you suggest that uh, I, I again reach out to Mr. Gaddetti, or do you know if he's working on that and plans and submitting it to us? From my understanding is that uh, Mr. Daddy was waiting to hear from you. Uh, okay, I will reach out to him again. Thank you for that info. Thank you. Hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yes, please, Mr. Bell. Uh, <clears throat> my concern is that, you know, that Leon is fully aware that the building will be be reviewed against the 2017 fire code. And my concern, one of the concerns is because of all the truck docks, and I know in the other building they store and park their vehicles inside. Mm -hmm. The size of that building puts it in requirement for sprinklers, just so that they are aware yes. that it's part it, of their- it, it will be sprinkled. Good. We're in agreement. And it'll have to be monitored alarms. Correct. Correct. 
Good. Okay, good. Yeah, that's not something you want to be have sprung on you later. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I'm looking at the issues. If we choose to approve this, there would you know, a motion would need to indicate the planning commission approves the front parking, uh, administrative review of the architectural details and the landscaping, um, uh, pending the development agreement, and assuming that the front lots, uh, or I'm sorry, the final lot split and lot consolidation is a, is a approved. Is there anything else, Commissioner, that you think I'm missing, Mr. France, today? Sure, Mr. Chairman. I have down, um, as you said, lot split and combination, <clears throat> architectural review, stormwater management, okay. development agreement slash memorandum understanding. I, I maybe would leave it as both, um, just so we're not saying development agreement. It's an MOU and... Okay. So let's just say call it both. Okay. Um, final code review based on this this new updated drawing, final planning zoning code review. And that relates to the, you know, the new parking and a few of the little minor items. And then uh, fire review. Uh -huh. Okay. And if the commission finds it acceptable, we can handle all of those items except the lot split and combination um, administratively. And the beauty of that is if there's anything, especially on the architectural piece, as Mr. Monaco pointed out, there's some concern, it sounds like, from the des city's designer. So if any of those things can't be worked out, they have to come back next month to the commission anyhow for the lot split and combination. So we could... If not, if those things can't meet common ground, then we could bring it back to the commission next month. That, if that's okay nice. with that approach. That, that sounds good to me. Commission, does that sound acceptable to you guys? Right. Seems reasonable. Is there any other questions by the commission? Any members? No. Mayor, do you have anything? If you're still there? Nope. Nope, okay. I have nothing. All right. All right, then I will take a stab at this motion. Um, uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the site plan uh, pending administrative review of the architectural details, uh, a development agreement, or MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, um, stormwater management, final planning and zoning code review. Uh, fire review um, and uh, contingent on the fi approval of final lot split and lot consolidation. And also note that the Planning Commission uh, approves uh, the front parking uh, with the administrative review of the, of the landscaping. I think that was all my bullets. Is there a second? I'll second it. Yeah. All right. Uh, any more discussion, Mr. France? Any? Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I believe I heard you say um, those first uh, items were all subject to administrative approval, and I believe I heard you say the lot split and consolidation not. Uh, subject to administrative approval and will come back to the planning commission, which has been indicated by the applicant. Yes. I think that's what you said. Yeah. Thank yep. you. Yep. Right, we've got a motion and a second. Any more discussion on this? All right. Uh, Susan, if you're not, if you're done writing, uh, if you want to do a, a roll call. Sure. Mr. Westbrook? Yes. Mr. Chiavone? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Mr. Blada? Yes. Mr. Robert? Yes. All right. Well, it sounds like there's still a little bit of work to do, but I think we're coming in the home stretch with this one, hopefully, guys. Uh, if nothing else, we would see you next month for the last foot consolidation. Hopefully, the rest of those could be worked out with the administration.
Can I bring up one more point, please, before we hang up? <clears throat> sure. Uh, this is Bruce Baum, the construction manager. Um, the owner wishes to, because of the um, weather conditions, uh, probably going to get worse towards the end of the year. Uh, we were wondering if we might be able to pursue a separate permit for the demolition of the existing building on site, as well as uh, submitting a separate drawing for the foundations to get those installed as soon as possible. Your comments. Um, Mr. Monaco, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, we had a conversation this afternoon regarding uh, this issue. Uh, the problem that I have is, uh, you know, uh, allowing a construction before, you know, the approval of the lots. Uh, I, I know that, you know, that possibly going to happen. But if it doesn't happen and we allow them to demolish a building and do a foundation, then the city would have a tremendous liability. Uh, I would like for Mr. Baum to submit a document to me stating that uh, either himself and the owner will be fully responsible that if if the lot split and consolidation was not were not to be approved, that all whatever he did was on his own and there would be no liability in the city and i would want that document to be reviewed and approved by the law department and if that works out i have no problem with him uh you know starting with the demolition and the foundation inspections and inspe the foundation uh, installation mr brown does that sound uh like something you guys could provide Yes, and I just want yeah, to point out one of the things. Uh, the, uh, like John, with, with the permission of the uh, of the council, I, I will take that up with Mr. Cadetti when I speak to him about the um, the development agreement, and I, I, I'll, I'll tell him what our intentions are and ask him what the city would require in terms of an indemnification agreement and see if we can kind of kill two birds with one stone. And also, just so you know, the building that we want a demolition is only on the present Ohio State waterproofing property as it exists now. Okay. Well, it sounds like we've got we've got a path for that, and I know it may seem crazy that she's gone this far. It's going to happen. And the last was the consolidation is pretty easy, but crazy things can happen, and I, I think Mr. Monaco just wants to make sure everything's covered and left open so yeah i think planning commission wise i don't know that we have any problem with it as long as uh, mr monaco can be satisfied and he'll be issuing the permits um get the law director involved and i think you know, hopefully that's something that can be worked out it sounds like it i can understand why you want to get moving before winter hits yeah, we vote on this here. pardon me we vote, should we vote on this I don't think that's something we, I think that, that sounds like more like a, a building department and law department issue. I don't know that we need to vote on that since it's a issuing a permit type thing. So I think it was just something that was, this is an opportunity for him to bring it up. Um, but I don't think, I don't think it's anything that we have to weigh in on. Does that sound right, Mr. France? I, I think that's correct. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, gentlemen, uh, we will probably see you here uh, online again in a, in a month, and hopefully everything that can wrap everything up, and uh, you guys are rolling, hopefully. We thank you for uh, working with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. I think that is the last uh, issue on the agenda, unless somebody has miscellaneous or anything like that mr france um thank you mr chairman i did want to let you know that uh in preparing the report for oh a lot of back i'm not sure what's happening sure. um in preparing the report for the uh, signage tonight um i did uh, go to look at some definitions of how we define things and I, I didn't have a hard copy of our new definitions that the commission 
had recommended as part of the sign code update. So I went online to look, and they weren't on there either. Um, so what, what we found out, and I'm working with Mr. Gadetti, is um, it looks like, I believe when the commission recommended them for approval, it didn't take it to council. Just a simple snap food that we can correct. Um, I'll work with um, Susan to confirm that the commission did recommend them to council. And if that's the case, the commission won't have to do anything. If for some reason the commission didn't take action on it, then um, we would have to have a recommendation out of the commission, take it to council. But I do believe the commission did, as part of their motion, include those definitions. It's just a little snafu that somehow they didn't get added in with the main part of the code. Um, and I'll and and such. Then I'll work with Mr. Gadetti to get it um, in front of uh, in front of council, and I'll I'll work with the mayor and Nino, and we'll get um, council to adopt it. If again for some reason it wasn't part of your recommendation, then we would have to have you um, motion to approve those definitions. Nothing's changed with them. Again, it's just a simple snafu. Somehow they didn't get in front of council. So. I'll keep you updated if for some reason you see them on your, on your agenda next month, don't be surprised. But uh, most likely, I do think you guys already took action on them. Okay, thanks. We'll uh, look for that and see if it's going on. All right. Um, as, as far as uh, city guys know, the city still plan on doing online meetings probably for a, for a little while, continue to do that. As far as I know. Okay. Yeah, the the building's still closed to the public. We still have the rule of 10, and we're trying to keep uh, our, our first responders as safe as possible. So uh, council's not even meeting there at this point. So for the foreseeable future, yes. Okay. That's that's fine. Just, just wanted to make sure. Um, all right. Uh, with that, uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. For a second. Second. Any more discussion? Any last minute? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Mayor, thanks for coming in. Thanks, everybody. Aye. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.